Hi everyone, and this virtual field trip will introduce students to the various steps of the water cycle and will help them make connections between the water cycle and all living things. So what is water? Well, the Earth is actually called the blue planet because 71% of Earth is covered in water. And it constitutes 50 to 70% of the weight of all plants and animals, including humans. Water is a molecule made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. It is the only substance that can naturally exist in all three states of matter. So a solid, a liquid, and a gas. Its unique properties enable life to exist on Earth. These properties include water's ability to remain liquid in a wide range of normal Earth temperatures and its ability to dissolve and transport other substances. The water cycle is the system by which Earth's fixed amount of water is collected purified and distributed from the environment to living things and then back to the environment. Water is constantly moving. In very simple terms, water evaporates from oceans into the atmosphere, condenses into clouds, falls as rain or snow, and eventually returns to the ocean through a drainage system of streams and rivers. This movement is called the water cycle. Energy from the sun, which allows for evaporation, and gravity of the earth, which allows for precipitation, are the driving forces that power the cycle. Clouds are created when water vapor, an invisible gas, turns into liquid water droplets. These water droplets form on tiny particles like dust that are floating in the air. The air can only hold a certain amount of water vapor. And when it can no longer hold all of that water vapor, the excess amount changes from a gas to a liquid or a solid, which we commonly know as rain or snow. The process of water changing from a gas to a liquid is called condensation. Glaciers. Even in the coldest regions on Earth, water is stored for a long time as ice and hard packed snow. But even ice and snow are constantly in motion. Glaciers slowly melt as they move inch by inch and icebergs break away from glaciers and float in the ocean and slowly melt over time as they make their way closer to the equator. The ocean. 90% of all water found on this earth is salt water and it resides right there. Streams. Smaller streams connect to rivers, which carry fresh water into lagoons and estuaries and eventually into the ocean. Groundwater. Groundwater is the water found underground in the cracks and spaces in the soil, sand, and rock. It is stored and moves slowly through geological formations in the soil, sand, and rock called aquifers. Animals. Like all other living things, animals need water to survive. Plants. Through the process of transpiration, water that is absorbed by the tree roots is released as vapor through the leaves. Impurities, many of which are good for a tree, remain behind in the tree. Forests greatly affect the watershed. When rain falls on the forest, it drips down through the forest canopy to the floor. Trees and other plants and layers of plant litter absorb the rainwater, reducing erosion and runoff. The water cycle is really a simplified model for looking at the journey of a water molecule. In the next activity, Sarah, Sam, and I will become a water molecule, rolling the dice and journeying between the seven different stations. Hopefully, you may see that there are an infinite number of paths that water might take.
The movement of water is greatly influenced by the contour of land and geographic features, such as mountains, valleys, and hills. But any change in elevation, including small elevation changes like in Florida, um, even feet or inches can affect the movement of water. A watershed is the area of land that guides water through small streams towards a major stream or river. Water's movement in the watershed, in turn, creates contours of the land by erosion and sedimentation. Although the gradual wearing down and erosion of soil is a natural process, without proper management, human activities such as clearing vegetation for development, logging, dam building, farming, and draining wetlands will increase the rate of erosion and will reduce water quality. Although, restoration, certain types of farming and landscaping and restoring wetlands can reverse those trends. Plants help to hold soil in place so that it doesn't wash away. But when rain falls on bare ground, the full force of raindrops can wash soil into streams, making them muddy. Plants also help to improve water quality by filtering out impurities that could be potentially harmful on surface water or underground. In this next activity, we will demonstrate how plants can affect water and sedimentation runoff. Here are two containers. Each container has approximately the same amount of soil and it's placed at the same height and slope. We will use the same volume of water, which is 230 milliliters, poured out at the same rate into the containers. The difference being one container has more sand and no plants, while the other has grass growing and a mixture of soils. Which one do you think will do better? As we do our experiment, I want you to think about a couple questions. Do you think there will be more sediment in our runoff from the sandy container or from the plant container? Which container do you think will have more water in the graduated cylinder at the end? Do you think there'll be a difference in appearance of the runoff water? Do you think the plants will affect the water's speed as it moves through the container? What do you guys think? Now let's see what we found out. My first question to you was, do you think there'll be more sediment in our runoff from the sandy container or the plant container? So let's take a closer look. Now these are two comparisons. The one on the left-hand side is from our sandy container. And you can see there's a lot of sediment that has come off into that water, into the graduated cylinder. There's also a lot of water in this graduated cylinder. Almost all of it went right through the container. But when we look at our plant one, the water is actually fairly clear and there's not nearly as much sediment or water that ran off. So as we can see, plants help retain the soil and water within the bottles. This is just another way to see the importance of plants within the whole water cycle. In conclusion, water is pretty important for everyone and everything. All the water we have is all the water we get, so it's important to use our water resources wisely. And remember, every living thing on this planet needs water to survive. A clean water supply is important for our family, our community, our environment, and the world. We should be grateful for the clean, fresh water that we have access to because that is not the same throughout the world. It's up to all of us to use water responsibly in our homes and our communities. We need to be good stewards by conserving our water resources, not only right now, but for future generations. So next time you're in the water, imagine the journey that it's been on. Thanks for joining us today and we'll see you on our next video.